Going is such like going is God. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That I had already done it. I had been already proved to myself that if I had to go back and work a real nine to five, hard labor, whatever it was, mm -hmm. man, I'm willing to do that. Right. So, you know, it was, I don't think it was a situation that could have broke me. Mm. I love that. Yeah. Okay, so you turned your dreams into reality. Um, what were some of your first goals that you set when you made the NFL? It's funny, I just had this conversation with somebody. I had no goals. Uh. I had no goals when I first came out. My only goal was to make the team. Yes. That was my only goal, to make somebody's team. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, I got in, um, came, I actually signed with Houston. So I signed with Houston coming out as an undrafted free agent. And I tell people this all the time, I said, man, I wanted to make that team, but I didn't want to make that team. <laughs> Why? I wanted to make that team because um, I think anybody will tell you that most of the time your first training camp is always your hardest training camp. Okay. It's always your hardest training camp. So you don't know what to kind of experience in that situation. So you don't know what to expect first and foremost, but right. now you grew up playing football, you roll out the bed, um, your mama take you to practice, you go back home, you ain't got no worries still. True. You ain't got no worries still. Now, this is a job. Mm. Like you doing this to make a living now. Right. Like you done with college. Like you leave from the NFL, you don't make it, you going back home with mama. Nah, facts. You, know <laughs> you going facts. back home with mama, so that ain't really no good look. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That nah, ain't no facts. good look. So in my head, I'm like, like this, this gotta work. Yeah. Like I was faithful the whole time. I was like, right. this gotta work. I wouldn't be here if it did. So nonetheless, um, I just kept running, going through training camp, and I ain't gonna lie to you, I was miserable in training camp. Mm -hmm. My first one, because you got all of that pressure. Right. You got True. all that pressure, I'm an undrafted guy, uh, I'm going out, I'm making plays, mm -hmm. but one thing you recognize as an undrafted guy, you ain't gonna get a lot of opportunities. You get the guys who come in first round, second round, third round. Mm -hmm. Oh man, they gonna give them so much rope. Right. But you, mm -hmm. you ain't got no leverage. You ain't got no. You ain't got no leverage. So whatever, whatever opportunity they give you, like you gotta make the best of it right away. Right. You know what I'm saying? It can't be no slip ups. Yeah. Any of that. So nonetheless, even when I was making taking advantage of my opportunities, like I wasn't getting the feedback that I wanted. Mm. I wasn't getting the feedback that I wanted. So I was getting it from my teammates. But not. But I wasn't getting it from the coaches. Mm -hmm. And that's who and, it meant. And that's, who it, and, that's, and that's the people who's speaking for you. Exactly. In this business. Right. That's the people who's speaking for you. They right. going up, they having meetings about you. Like, okay, what you think about this guy? Mm -hmm. Ah, you know, he you know he don't know the playbook. He don't know this, you know. Ah, he's a good player, but ah, he can't play special team. Like, they talk about all of this stuff mm -hmm. right here. So it goes down to... It could be a person make the team because you may have one guy who's better at the corner position, but you got another guy he's not that good at corner position. He's solid, but he's a very good special team player too. Mm -hmm. So now he have a little bit more value mm -hmm. than the other guy, even though the other guy's a better player. Right. So now they're looking for value. Okay. More than right. you know at a specific. So that's the way they, they make some of these decisions mm -hmm. in the, in the game. So once you know that, now what do you have to do? You got to make sure your game is expanding. Yeah, you got to make mm -hmm. sure your game is expanding. So from my position, I felt like I didn't have a, a, a real good chance because you know I returned kicks and stuff in college, punts. The whole nine, and I got there, and they wouldn't let me do it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they wouldn't let me do it. So yeah. I'm like, come on, man. That's that's, that's where I'm at. That's the way where I, I can get in. Yes. So they didn't let me do it, but I still was doing my thing at corner. Still doing my thing at corner. Um, I was doing I was doing good on special teams. Um, 
but you get to a point to where it becomes a numbers game. Mm -hmm. And it's hard not to count the numbers. Right. I'm like, man, right. he already got this guy, this guy. He's going to make the team. You start to count those numbers, and you're like, dang, where I'm at? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, where I'm at? Right. So, Flipping the page. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, man, they ain't going to keep but five guys at my position. Mm -hmm. Typically, that's what they they kept in the league. When I came in, they would keep five corners. Gotcha. So, yeah, when you go to count them numbers, you go to count them bodies. You're like, man, mm -hmm. I see myself at best number seven. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you look at it that way, not because you ain't good enough, but right. because you looking at the way they looking at mm -hmm. it. Important and why they go wider their way just to hide it in brown. I was down for a couple, but I kept it humble and hustling. I look at me now. I've been running this race so wide.